I need help balancing studying for step one as well as being a new med student. How do I do it? How should and what tips do I need to know to not only get that 250, but get that 350? <laughs> now you probably didn't say the last part, but in this video guys, we are gonna touch base on how to balance being a new med student, studying for step one, and making sure you crush it when it's time for test day. Let's get to it. All right guys, what is going on? Luxury of an MD journey, helping you succeed on your journey with less stress. If you're new to this channel, first of all, welcome. I'm an internal medicine resident that have been making videos just like this one about step one and more topics for students just like you for the past three years. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you find the like button and then tell that like button that you're gonna destroy it, disintegrate it, just destroy it off the maps of your browser. And once you do that, um, stay tuned. At the very end, we'll talk about um, an all-inclusive resource just for you guys that I'm creating called the Step One Academy. So if you're interested and you want some of the bonus tips that I'll be talking about in this video, stay tuned till the end. But in this video, we'll be talking about how to balance Step One as well as being a preclinical student. So we'll touch on basically a step-by-step -step approach as well as some tips at the very end. So let's get to it. So step number one is basically deciding how much time do you want to commit? Now, that seems like a, a rhetorical question. Well, actually, I wanna spend all my time on step one. I wanna do the best, 350, right? Well, in reality, there is no right answer. You don't have to be somebody spending every single day. In fact, you can say, I'm gonna spend a little bit every week, a little bit every month. It's really a comfort level. And while it may not seem true, honestly, it comes down to this. When you get to your dedicated and any student who's already studied for step one can vouch for me, you never study for step one the way you do during your dedicated prep. So instead, it's more important that you use your time ahead of it to one, nail down your foundations and two, just get a nice ease and progression into test day. You don't need to stress yourself out because you're gonna be stressed during your dedicated anyway. So instead figure out how much time do you wanna commit? And it can be as simple as saying, I could do 20 minutes a day or let's start with two evenings of one hour sessions. Or it can also be, I'm just gonna do a Saturday every other weekend, and that's totally fine. And I'm gonna give you different steps in the next couple of questions to basically help you understand what to do during those times. So the first is figure out how much time you wanna commit. Now step two for step one is figuring out what resources to use. And it really comes down to one, a reference material, and two, a resource that you're gonna use for a question source. Now, reference material, a lot of students love using first aid, but at the same time, there's a lot of you going, ugh, vomit. So friend, I need it. First aid can really be a polarizing um, resource because it's hard to use, especially if you're not comfortable with the material. It just seems like facts and that's what it is. So instead, there are other resources that you guys can use. Things like Physio, Picmonic, Sketchy Medical. There's a lot and I'll link down below a lot of the resources as well as discounts that you guys can check out in the description down below. But find one reference material, give it a shot, try it out. And if you don't enjoy it, then you can consider switching, but don't just get caught up with what everyone else is using find a few resources particularly one and make that your reference material now the next part is figuring out a question bank now the choice here is a little bit more limited but you still have some options including the ones that we talked about in the reference section so that includes things like physio which has videos as well as practice questions um, there'll be a review video um, linked down below if you guys are interested in checking them out um, but also just going to a generic question bank so things like uworld kaplan um, usmle rx i made a totally different video about this on how to use them i'll link that down below as well um, but make sure you pick one and also pick a reference material and make those your main go-tos if you need to supplement something else like pathomo when you're doing pathology or sketchy farm when you're doing pharmacology that's okay but adding too much just makes it overwhelming particularly if you're somebody who committed to less time for step one during question number one which is i may just do like an afternoon every week now you have your resources you have your time and basically now step number three is to block off that specific time every week. Try to make it repeatable, try to make it predictable. It can simply be that you know Wednesday afternoons are relatively benign, there's no anatomy lab, you know, quizzes are always on Friday. You're gonna do some step one study on Wednesday afternoons from four to 5.30. Or maybe Saturday mornings are a little bit more relaxed to you and you feel that you have enough energy to do it. Um, find that time for you. Um, and then fit in whatever resources or question makes you do and make a study schedule around that. It can simply be progressing with the class that you're already studying for. So if you're in cardiology, you can do cardiology related questions and videos through your reference materials, something of that mixture, or you can do totally random. Honestly, again, it doesn't matter, 
pick a plan and then stick to a plan. Now the next three tips are gonna help you balance being a student, studying for step one. So step number 3.5 is making sure you hit that like button if you haven't done so already. But step number four is just avoiding talking about step one with your classmates. A lot of you guys know it's a very anxiety provoking topic. You probably are anxious already, so you saw step one in the YouTube title and you went, click, I gotta know. So while I'm glad that you clicked on the video, it's still important that once you come up with step number one through three of creating a plan, dedicating time for it, and figure out the resources, you really just don't wanna talk to anybody about what you're doing. It just avoids all complications. If you do instead find that you're either struggling with your resource or your study strategy, then come to resources like YouTube, Reddit, Student Doctor Forum, get some ideas, make a new plan, and then go forward with it. That also goes into step number five, which is to stick to your plan and make small adjustments instead of 180 degree turns. You probably have come up with a step one studying plan that is probably realistic and works for you. Overall, it's a good idea, but it has little elements here and there that are not well suited for you. So fix those elements and then just keep adapting versus trying to say, oh, that sounds good and this person scored a 260. I'm just gonna do what they're doing. It doesn't work that way, guys. Find a study schedule that works best for you with your time and then make a little bit of tinkerings here and there to get to your final result. Now, my last tip is a master bonus tip that I feel like no one's talking about. I did touch base on it on my question bank video, and that is to make a master file of Anki cards with all of your missed questions and topics from your first two years. So every time you do a question bank, uh, whether it's UWorld, USMLE RX, or some other practice question, and you miss it completely, or you guess on it and get it right, but you really don't understand what's going on, just quickly make a flashcard, use your screenshot tools, make a flashcard, add it to a master file that grows over time. And when it comes time for your dedicated, as long as you make good flashcards, you can say, I'm gonna spend 10 minutes every morning doing my weaknesses. And so this is a card deck made specifically for you on everything you struggle with. It's not an Anki deck from Bro and Cephalons or Zonki that is made by somebody else. Instead, it's made particularly for you and your strengths and weaknesses. And then during your dedicated, you can then work on more weaknesses by adding to that Anki deck as you do your URL questions. So make that master file now, continue to update it, and then use Anki during your dedicated to really quiz yourself on all the things that you are weak at as a first and second year med student. So guys, those were my top six tips. Before we end this video, let's talk about the Step 1 Academy, which I mentioned at the start of this video. Basically, it's a culmination of all of your pressing questions from my subscribers, my email subscribers, and my blog readers regarding Step 1. It's how to study, specific study strategies, how do I use this resource? Basically, how do you get the best score possible? So this resource is going to help you answer those questions. It's also going to give you study schedules as well as giving you interviews with top scoring students all in one. So right now in the making of this video, we're still collecting more pressing questions that you guys have. So make sure in the link down below, you guys check it out. You'll get forwarded to a survey and just add your pressing questions because then I can make training specifically for needs that you have. But if you're watching this video in the future, you know, uh, the Step 1 Academy may already be live or about to go live. So you guys can check it out down below, um, but I'll keep updating that link. And again, before you leave this video, make sure, make sure that that like button is destroyed and not on your browser. Thanks. Um, but thank you guys in all seriousness for attending this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below with any questions you guys have. I'll be happy to make more Step 1 related videos. You guys seem to love those. And hopefully the setup the video quality, the audio is better than it has been in the past. I'm sorry for any of you guys that have stuck with me for years and have had crappy videos, but I finally have a good camera or a better camera and good audio equipment. Hopefully it's better. I don't know, comment down below if this style is better because um, if you made it to the end, then you can take another two seconds and let me know. But I'm babbling, so I'm gonna end this video. Thank you guys so much for making it till the end, being a part of my journey. Hopefully, hopefully I've been a part of yours. Hit that like button. Um, but I'll see you guys later. Peace, guys.